walk around compound. We'll see some tigers and then maybe see some peas and hopefully we'll hear some squeaks and Derek will ramble. We have Mr. Clyde currently in our gift shop recuperating, fighting, trying to get better. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that uh, we don't currently know, um, but the whole process is uh, about trying to at least eliminate the things you know that you know that you don't know so that hopefully the stuff that you want to know eventually shows itself I'm gonna go around because the uh, you know doors and whatnot hi mr. stinks uh, Okay, okay, um, it's Sunday right now as I'm posting this, oh, hello, <laughs> all you big cat lovers out there, it's me, Derek, welcome to another super duper fantastic walk around the compound web, walk around the compound webcast, I am so sorry, I am so, so sorry that, uh, I didn't get the, um, the last webcast done, I didn't have one filmed. I thought that I was going to be able to reveal a thing that I've been working on, but it turns out that the thing I'm working on is taking a little bit longer than originally anticipated. So, uh, my apologies for that, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. Absence just makes the heart grow fonder. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, I'm here filming one now. It's going to be a special one, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Mr. Clyde Man is in there and like I said there's a lot of stuff that we don't know but there are some promising things um, like I, we were saying before with some of the Instagram posts that he has not been eating um, he's lost a lot of weight recently and there that could be indicative of a lot of things it could be indicative of uh, kidney problems it could be I mean you're talking about cancer you're talking about bad infections you're talking about um, you know, problems in, with, uh, uh, mechanics, like gum problems and infections and teeth problems. Um, we had him sedated. Uh, Dr. Bill, you know, looked at his throat, looked at his mouth. Nothing seemed to be wrong with his, uh, throat and his mouth. So, um, we had to, uh, look at other reasons why his appetite might have been, uh, poor. So... Yeah, there's a few different things, but um, Heidi is, you know, she's so amazing at setting up these really, really nice environments and these really peaceful um, and and conducive to healing environments. And I, it's it's a lot of people don't take that into consideration. I think when they're taking care of uh, of animals, that you gotta, they they really do respond like in the way that you know people would respond. It's it's an all encompassing type of healing. Um, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, peer-reviewed, uh, you know, placebo-based, double-blind medicinal studies and, and, and solid vet work. I mean, that stuff is, is the foundation for, you know, good health and um, recuperating whatever your ailments are. But there are a lot of holistic uh, measures that need to be employed as well. You notice like the tone of my voice, you notice like a lot of the comfort things that are in there, the stimulation, um, the different people. It's like we have people that come in, people from Clyde's past uh, came in, uh, that, that knew Clyde when he was a little guy, um, and he showed signs of promise and he was snuffling and stuff like that. Um, the music, there's like, like Heidi actually was cycling through all different types of music to find one that he seemed to really respond well to and become very relaxed by. And it was uh, like Tibetan 
chants, like Tibetan like flutes and chants, and he seems to really like that. So it's like all of these different little things that come together. Oh my gosh, that come together to uh, to to you know make him calm, like soothe his nerves, and uh, and prime his body for healing. And he actually has been uh, eating. He has been eating. Now, Heidi has been taking, we've got a, a, a prescription strength uh, Nutribullet. I mean, that thing, uh, it, it, you can, you can, you know, throw a, a stinking, you know, clock radio into that thing and it'll turn it into fine slurry. And uh, we've been putting, because he doesn't want to eat just like chunks of meat. He did, that was just not, didn't feel right to him for whatever reason. Um, also, we've, he's been drinking water. Uh, there's different uh, silver particulate solution um, that we've been putting in there to uh, hopefully try to minimize whatever inflammation. Um, and uh, but Heidi was able to uh, basically it's just a mixture of ground beef and water, and just I mean like ultra ultra fine, even like small chunks. It has like it has to be basically like liquid meat. Um, even little chunks, like he doesn't want to, doesn't want to eat that, but she was able to put that into bottles, into baby bottles, and he actually has been eating that, and like, um, today is like one of the first days that he's shown, like, you know, interest in food, and, and like, not just like, okay, this is something I have to do, it's just like, oh, this is food, I like, I remember, I like that stuff, so, I mean, cautious optimism, again, we still haven't gotten the blood results back yet, um, by the time that this video gets posted on Tuesday, we should have those results. So hopefully, maybe by the end of this video, I'll be able to um, have that information to you. Hello, I'm here with Clyde, and I uh, just want to give you a quick little update about uh, him, about his uh, condition. Uh, we did get some of the blood results back, and they indicated some uh, kidney sort of malfunction. And uh, we don't. There's still some more things that we don't quite know just yet. Um, but what we are thinking, thinking. Sorry, babe. I just got up this morning. I, you're beautiful. Oh my gosh. But anyway, what we're thinking may have uh, maybe the the case is that he got uh, dehydrated, um, which caused his kidneys to uh, go out of whack, and then uh, uh, he was uh, possibly expelling a lot of his proteins, a lot of his nutrients, a lot of his, his muscle mass. Um, and then it actually had a cascading effect on his digestive system, made it so he didn't want to eat. And then that also made him lose weight. So acids from the acids kidneys. from the acids from the kidneys. Yes. So this is what it's pointing towards. Um, and we have uh, you know been working a lot. Where's Rach? Where's Rach? Doing meds. Tell her to come here. Yeah. Yeah. This is because um, Clyde has been. Uh, we've been feeding him baby bottles with pureed ground beef. Um, and we did put some medicine in there, and we think that he might be kind of saying, like, ah, medicine makes it yucky. So, uh, we, uh, we got some horsey, horsey chunks, and he seems to, uh, he seems to be digging the horsey chunks. And this is exciting. Ah. Oh, right in the water. Just like a raccoon. <laughs> Just like a raccoon. Like, yeah. There. Oh, on your foot. Right put here. it right on, on your feet. And then the foot. <laughs> He's still a little bit spacey. <laughs> still a little bit spaced out. Yippee. Man. Yeah. That's good. This is really good news. <sighs> Too big. Too big. I cut that though. It just didn't get all the way cut. And then this is booby. So, cautious optimism. That's what uh, that's what we are suggesting ah, at this point. Another one. He thinks this is a rocket. Yeah, he... Uh, he keeps on putting his meat in his water bowl. All right, I gotta help Heidi. But here's something that we have to uh, talk about. I am actually not gonna be filming the rest of this webcast. I'm gonna be doing another handoff, another webcast handoff to Miss Care Board President Jamie Reed, Care Jamie, Care Jamie. Everyone is going to be doing 
uh, the rest of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Um, I mean, you know, she's going to be talking about all the different things that she wants to talk about and imparting her wisdom. I literally just asked her if she could do this like a, like two hours ago, and then she's like, I guess. <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting to do this, but okay. So, yeah, she's a trooper. Um, one thing I would ask is uh, just that, you'd like, I, I asked Rachel to do this a couple webcasts ago, and she didn't realize that you can zoom in. You know, just by doing that, she okay. didn't. Yeah, she didn't use that at all. So all right. I know, don't even know how to do this. What so. do you mean? Yeah, all you literally, literally, all you're doing is like you're taking the camera and okay. you're walking around. You're filming. You're talking. Okay. You're just continuously talking. It's just about whatever comes to your head. You interact with the cats, and then uh, usually I go for about like you know 30, 35 minutes, something like that. Okay. Um, so yeah. All right. And all right. Action. Bye. 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 Okay. Uh, ah! Hi. <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing, so thank you, Derek. Um, you but hi. Hit the, like, stop button. Just go ahead and just start. I can edit it all together. Okay. It's all good. Okay. okay. All right, because I'll undoubtedly screw it up somehow. Um, so hi, I'm Jamie, and I guess I'll be walking you around the compound today. Um, Derek really did surprise me with this, so um, I wish I wasn't so sweaty and gross today, but uh, I guess it isn't about looking good and it's about the kitties. So I wanted to start with Ace because unfortunately Derek does not have uh, good luck getting nice peaceful video of Ace, but also unfortunately Ace is passed out right now, so I've been trying to get him up and it's not happening. So hi Ace and bye Ace. So, um, I really, yeah, he really sprung this on me, and then I did a tour, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to talk about, um, but I guess I can start with telling you about how I got started volunteering here. Hi, huh, baby? You want to say hi? There. So, I don't even know if I'm getting anything. Oh, there she is. Wow, that really seems. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, Selena. Hi. So I started volunteering here about eight years ago. I, um, when I was in college, I had planned on being a vet, and I specifically wanted to work with big cats. And I learned in college that I was really, really bad at math and science. And this is us being energy efficient and drying our laundry outside. We're, we're green here. And these are some bob kitties. Zoom in. Hi, Max and me. Hi, babies. So, yeah, I learned I was really, really, really bad at math and science. So, being a vet <laughs> didn't look like an option anymore. And, buddy! Hi! And so, I got a degree in English. But uh, I still really never lost that desire to work with animals and to help them. And when I was about 30, my best friend was brought out to care uh, by another friend of hers. And she knew that I would absolutely lose my mind over this place. So she brought out me out here for my birthday. And for about a year, I hounded care to let me volunteer with them. See, Derek wants me to zoom, so I'm zooming. Pa! Papa! Oh my goodness, hi! Come here! So, yeah, I started volunteering out here, and when I first started coming out here, I was cleaning enclosures and just following the interns around, and really, all I wanted to do was be around the cats and learn about them. Um, my big... I guess ambition with care was I wanted to be able to do enrichment with the cats because animal behavior was always something that I was that's zoomed in too much and he's gonna pee yep uh, if you guys know anything about Canapoli you know that his favorite thing to do is to urinate on things that's his uh, claim to fame I guess weird thing to be famous for but that's his it's all his um, and there's Solano being weird as usual. Yano! Hi! Hi, Goofy! Hi! 
Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Hi. See, I get these weird close-ups. I am not good at this videoing thing. Um, but yeah, so I want to do an enrichment with the cats. And I guess, am I supposed to do this to myself? Hi. Uh, I wanted to do enrichment with the cats. So that was my big ambition coming out here. I thought, you know, I want to work up to where they trust me enough that I can do kind of behavioral stuff with the, the cats out here. <laughs> that was really the end of my... Um, ambitions at care and over the years of course I've gotten to do a lot of enrichment with the animals which is awesome but I also found myself volunteering for things that I really had no idea how to do at all like build a website and do our social media and organize fundraisers <laughs> these are things that I'd never done before had no experience with and for some strange reason, I felt compelled to say, oh yeah, I can try that and see, I can see if I can do it. So <laughs> that's how I got myself in a position where um, I was named the director of development for care. So I, uh, I do all that stuff. Don't know that I'm very good at it, but I certainly try and I learn new things all the time. So <laughs> most of the work I do is from home and I get out oh my gosh I'm watching this thing Jamie's doing amazing and then all of a sudden she, she gets self-conscious and she's like Argh. And she said no and she stopped the recording and then she went back to the beginning part and then she um she restarted it to get herself you know centered um I thought she was doing amazing and uh we'll keep both parts Okay, I think I'm doing it right. Okay, I think. Okay, hello, <laughs> it's Jamie. Um, I'm not gonna keep this turned around because Derek really did ambush me and I am nasty and sweaty. So it's not about me, it's about the kitties. So I'm gonna be pointing it this way most of the time. So I tried really hard to get Ace down, but he's just passed out. And him being 20 years old and an old guy, I'm not gonna force him to get down, but I, oh, oh, wait, Ace, Mister. No, okay. I did want to show you how lovely he is because I know Derek only gets to show one side of Ace, and unfortunately, it's the the grumpy old curmudgeon side of Ace. But that's not how he is all the time. He's actually really, really a nice, calm, beautiful boy. Um, at least he is with. With most people, Derek, not so much, but he got the, the short end of that stick. But anyway, bye, Ace. So I really have no idea what I'm going to talk about, but I guess I can start off talking about um, starting to volunteer here about eight years ago. So long story short, I wanted to be a vet, and I specifically wanted to work with big cats. Hi, huh, Bobby. Bobby. Hi, pretty girl. Hi. Hi. She's pretty adorable. Um, yeah, I wanted to work with big cats, went to college, declared my major, and then realized I'm really bad at math and science. Oh, you can't see. There we go. There's a Bob Kitty. Hi. There's a Pete. So I changed my major to English, got a degree in English, started working in uh, the education field, but really never. Oh, there's another Bob Kitty. Hi. Hi. No, no. Bad. <laughs> Don't trust Bob Kitties. I think we have another one coming. Or maybe not. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, but never lost my desire to work with animals. So a friend of mine came out to care for a tour. 
and knew that I would absolutely lose my mind. By the way, the one that tried to grab the phone is Max. He does not like phones, and I should know better than to try to put one up to his face. That's Mia. Mia's my buddy. We get along really well. Um, but yeah, so my friend came out here and was like, oh my gosh, you're going to lose your mind. She brought me out here. I came for a tour. Fell in love with this place. Hi, pa. And with a... Oh my goodness, hi. Hi, mister. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fell in love with a tiger named Tinkerbell. Um, she was kind of... Oh, and he, yeah, he just peed all over me. Awesome. Like, that hasn't happened a million times. Uh, it's amazing that you get used to tiger bodily fluids working out here, but you do. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird thing to get used to, but I'm used to it. Uh, so, yeah, Tinkerbell was elderly when I started volunteering out here, um, but I just absolutely fell in love with her. And started coming out, cleaning enclosures, um, learning what I could about the cats. My big ambition, and there's a passed out Bonnie. My big ambition in coming out here was just to help as much as I could and someday work my way up to being trusted enough to do enrichment with the cats because animal behavior, ah, animal behavior was always kind of what I was interested in. Why, well, mister? Um, so, that was eight years ago, almost nine years ago, and in that time I have certainly done my fair share of animal enrichment. I love doing things with the, with the animals, figuring out what they like, what interests them, what uh, gets them to exhibit natural behaviors. I like watching them play. I kind of like watching them in secret sometimes when they don't even know that I'm there, just to kind of see what they, what they do when they think that they're not being watched. Hi. Uh. Oh my goodness. Yano. Oh my goodness. You were trying to get his phone. I wonder what it is about Derek's phone because they don't do that when it's my phone. <laughs> you're, you're bad. <laughs> yeah, you are. They're being very frisky today. What are you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, I've done lots of enrichment, but I've also gotten myself involved. I guess this is the grass around the compound part. I've gotten myself involved in a lot of other stuff, like uh, maintaining our website, um, doing our social media accounts, helping with organizing fundraisers, uh, all kinds of interesting and new stuff that, of course, I never had any experience with before. So it's definitely been a huge learning curve and a huge uh, learning experience for me. But I've loved every second of it. Um, I love that I've gotten to do a lot of things here that I wouldn't have done anywhere else. And, of course... It's all for these guys. Because I have fallen in love with each and every one of them. Totally and completely. And of course, more with some than others. Like this handsome guy right here. Chop! Choppers! Chop chop! Hi! Hi! Um, so, what else can I tell you guys? Uh, favorite cats. Everybody always asks that, what, what your, your favorite cats are. Um, of course, you guys have probably heard this a million times, but you love them all, but you can't help it when there's a few that just become a little bit more special than the others. And I've certainly had a few that really um, got in there a little bit more than, than everybody else did. Hey, banana! Hey, banana. Well, hi. Hi, pretty. Hi. She says, I 
don't really care about you right now. Okay, fine. Um, Tinkerbell, again, uh, the first cat that I really kind of fell in love with out here. She was just something special. She was absolutely stunning. I mean, oh, beautiful, beautiful cat. And she snuffled all the time. And she always came to say hi to me. And she was just, she was the best. And I'm very happy that she had as long of a life as she did. She was, I think, like a week or two away from her 20th birthday when she passed away. And she had had a really, really good life. And then after her, it was a mountain lion named Taz. This big, gigantic monster of a mountain lion that actually lived in this enclosure right here. In fact, this enclosure that Arali and Zibiri are in was actually built for four mountain lions that Care took in from a zoo that closed down. It was uh, Beauty, Beast, Majana, and Taz. And Taz was, like I said, he was a giant. He was huge. And he had this little itty bitty baby squeak. And I'd come over and I'd go, Taz! And he'd go, I'd go Taz and he'd go out and we'd do that a couple times and then he would come down off his platform and come see me and just oh my goodness and just purr his head off and then without fail beauty or beast these itty bitty old 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 I mean ancient little cougars would come over and beat him up until he moved away because they wanted attention. Happened without fail. And the amazing thing is, as big as he was, as strong as he was, he never ever fought back. I saw him get a little peeved a couple times and hiss and maybe swipe at him a little bit, but he really could have done some damage and he just, he wasn't a fighter. He was a lover. He just wanted he just wanted some affection. And those two old biddies were just <laughs> awful to him. <laughs> but he put up with it. Um, so I was devastated when he passed away. He, uh, him along with Beauty and Beast, uh, had, well, all four of the cougars had been declawed at some point. And so... Beauty and Beast both had a lot of difficulty walking. Um, it was actually really painful to watch them. Uh, Beauty, that really was her her downfall. And it was Taz's as well. He just had a really hard time getting around. And it, it just eventually just became too much. So I was really devastated when we lost him. But... But then I'd also found another love, another love I never thought I'd have in a million years, and that was Tabula. Tabula little lioness. And of course my children, my weird little kids here, my lemurs. You know, it's funny, when I first came out here, my favorite animal in the whole world was tigers. I was a tiger person. And... I have fallen in love with so many animals that I never thought I would. Of course, I have my lemurs and my bob kitties that I absolutely love. And I've actually become a huge fan of female lions, which I never... Hi! <laughs> That's Stella. Hi! That's Ruth. Um, yeah, I never thought I'd really be a fan of lions. They, I don't know why, but lions, I mean, I loved all big cats. I loved all animals. I've always been an animal person, but I, uh, I'm really doing bad with this videoing thing. Um, I can't do two things at once, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so the lions, uh, never really thought that much of lions. But, um, 
I really liked Layla a whole lot when I first started coming out here. And uh, of course, when Noelle was born, I fell in love with her, the first cub I'd ever been around. And she'll always be kind of special to me. But it was Tabula that really got me into lionesses. <laughs> I'm a lioness girl. Uh, Tabula, when she first got here, was scary. Um, she, hi. <laughs> hi. You're very close. Hi. Um, yeah, Tabula was really scary. She, when she first got here, she was, of course, terrified. Um, this was a new place, and it was very scary. And, hi, Rita. Hi. And she was very aggressive and very unpredictable, and she scared me half to death. And I wanted nothing to do with her um, for quite a while. The lemurs love phones, by the way. They can see the reflection, so they think it's pretty cool. Um, and then, little by little, I don't know, I just started getting drawn to her and spending time with her. And she ended up being just the most magnificent creature in the world to me. Ben Ben! Bendy Lou! Ben! That's Bendy. She's all curled up for a nap. I know you guys don't get to see very much of her, so I wish she would come out. Bim bim! Whoop. Actually, I can probably go in there. Um, God, losing my train of thought. So Tabula, yes. Uh, I got really close to Tabula, and I loved her very much. And that was, of course, a very hard loss, um, like so many have been. I have definitely learned that working with animals is a great source of joy and it's incredibly interesting and fulfilling, but it is also absolutely heart-wrenching at times when they're sick, um, when they're old, and I've been volunteering here long enough now where I've watched animals in their prime age and pass away and it is it's tough but at the same time will you please this this one hey can you go somewhere else other than my face please excuse me Rita come on go thank you um at the same time it may be like it, it it's hard sometimes to say goodbye to animals that you grow so close to, but at the same time, the main reason I'm involved with care is because I know they have a good life here. And just knowing, Missy, <laughs> Bin Bin, and just knowing that I get to be a part of helping them have a good life, um, you know, that's something I'm going to remember forever. That's something I'm going to be proud of forever. Um, because I've always been an animal person. I've always been someone that doesn't want to see them hurt and doesn't want to see them suffer and wants to be a part of doing something good for them and protecting them. And I really feel like I get a chance to do that here. And I'm, I'm part of a team of people that feel very passionately about that and always try to put them first. Missy, Ben Ben. She is just, hi, having none of it. Ben, baby girl. <laughs> well, so much for that. Um, so yeah, Care's a pretty special place. I'm very, proud uh, to be a part of it and that's really all I got
I guess. <laughs> Bye, lemurs. Bye, lemurs. So, I guess that's it. Thank you. Sorry if this was one big long ramble, but I guess if Derek gets to ramble, I get to ramble too. So, uh, see you around. Bye.